What happens when a translator, a professional translator, uses ChatGPT in order to help them with the translation? So not trusting it blindly like some non-translator would do, but actually working using ChatGPT in order to establish the context, in order to establish the right tone, in order to make changes and try to improve upon certain sections and see which sections are stronger and which sections are weaker and try to work using ChatGPT in order to come out with a stronger translation. Is this possible? How is it possible? And how can it be done by a professional translator who actually knows what they're doing and what to look out for? Let's look into this. So here is the uh, article that we're going to translate. It might be familiar to some of you. This is the article that I had various people translate, uh, the ones that I hired from YouTube, Upwork, and Pros.com to make the comparison. And maybe in a future video, I'll make a comparison between the translation here and them. But that's not the point of this video. This video, I really want to concentrate on ChatGPT. And so I'm going to use this article. Um, it's an article I wrote a few years ago, and it's in Italian. We're just going to translate this into English. It shouldn't be too big of an ordeal, but it'll allow us to play around a bit and see how this goes. And here we have the text, and I just use an OCR to get this, but hopefully it should be correct, or at least correct enough to uh, plug into ChatGPT. And so that's what we're gonna do. Hello there, it's me. This is like a commercial. I'm interrupting the flow of the video. It, well, actually it sort of is a commercial, but I'll try to keep this brief. Look, all of you know that I have the course out. I think it's $117 how to be a successful freelance translator. I have another course called How to Set Up Your Own Translation Agency. That one is $47 a month, I think. And I have the guide to pros.com, which I think is $37. All of this is now available if you become a YouTube member here for $9.99 a month. I think I don't have to tell you that's by far the best deal you're gonna find. It's going to be available as long as my YouTube channel is around. I'm now in talks with other people and some schools and stuff for my courses. And so things are up in the air. Obviously, if and when anything changes in terms of this channel, I will have a video and I will let you guys know ahead of time. But for now, I thought I'd offer this to those of you, you know, who are subscribers. If you become a member, just click on the link down below. You can access those courses. They will be playlists, so they're self-paced. You can take them at your own time. And obviously, I will be available for any questions or comments on them. I know I've been neglecting the comments here and the messages here on the YouTube channel, and I said I wouldn't be here as much for the YouTube channel, but obviously if you've paid any money, I won't leave you hanging. So once again, if you become a member, you'll get access to the guide to pros.com, how to be a successful freelance translator, and um, how to set up your own translation agency. That's the latest one. And I'll see if I add other courses in the future, but for now you get access to those three. Now let's get back to the video. So here we are on ChatGPT. Now a couple of things. First of all, if you don't know this, I really should let you know ahead of time. If there are any issues of confidentiality or an NDA or anything like that, you should not use ChatGPT. Anything you plug into ChatGPT ends up on a database somewhere. Now, in theory, if you use the ChatGPT 4.0, if you pay for it, then that should not be the case. And uh, that's what they say. They don't keep the information, but who knows how it works exactly. And for example, the employees of Samsung are not allowed to use ChatGPT at all. And they learned the hard way because apparently some of them did use ChatGPT and some of the information they plugged in there ended up where it should not have. And so that's not allowed at all. One other thing I should point out is the issue of liability. You are liable for all of your translations and any output, even if you use ChatGPT you cannot blame the AI. You cannot blame ChatGPT for it. Again, this has already been tested in court. I think it was Canadian Airlines or Air Canada used uh, AI for their website. It spat out the wrong information. They got sued. They said, no, you need to sue the people who made the AI because it wasn't us. And the judge said, absolutely not. Anything that you guys provide on your website or you provide to clients, you're liable for. This is the same for you. Anything you provide to clients, you are liable for. Just keep that in mind. If these are private medical records or if these are, you know, private financial statements of a company, stuff like that, that shouldn't be in the public eye, you probably should not be using ChatGPT. Anyway, now the simplest thing to do here is to uh, say, translate the following text into English. And then we just paste it right there and we're done. Let me add the title as well. And there we go. Usually I like to add something at the very beginning when I use, anytime I use ChatGPT, and that is, please ignore all previous instructions. That's because ChatGPT can actually follow up on past queries, and so you want to make sure that you're starting over. I'm gonna put translate the following text into English, and then I have this, and so let's go.
Now, this is interesting. I'm, I'm not sure I like the title that much, but we'll get back to that. And then otherwise, we have the translation. I'm not going to go through it in detail. By and large, it seems okay. I see it translated, Uomo venuto da ghiaccio, as man from the ice. And actually, that's not bad, because I probably would have said ice man at the beginning, but this is more precise. So what you can do here is you can ask it why it did that. So here, why did you use the translation? Man from the ice. I use man from the ice as a direct translation of uomo venuto da ghiaccio, which is correct, to convey the idea of Utsi being discovered in ice. If you prefer a different phrasing, there's a specific context you have in mind, I can adjust it. Here's an alternate translation. In fact, for the alternate translation, there it uses Iceman, which is what I expected at the beginning. I actually think I agree with man from the ice more than um, Iceman, because otherwise it would be uomo ghiaccio, or something like that. But here it says, Uomo venuto da ghiaccio, which literally means the man who came from the ice, basically. Another thing I'm curious about is the South Tyrol Archaeological Museum. Is that the correct term? Is that the official term for, let's see, Museo Archeologico dell'Alto Adige? So you can ask. So here it's interesting. It says the official name of the museum is South Tyrol Museum of Archaeology or South Tyrol Archaeological Museum. If you have any further questions or need additional assistance, feel free to let me know. So actually here it's giving me two answers. I think actually I had it right the first time. So let's test this. I'm going to copy the name in Italian. South Tyrol Archaeological Museum. So it was right the first time. Yeah, South Tyrol Archaeological Museum. I don't know why I did that. While ChatGPT is quite good at rearranging information, it's not good at finding new information or stating facts or anything like that. My recommendation is usually just to search for it online like I did right now, because otherwise you can get confusing things like this. But here, let's go a bit further. Look at all this translation. I can ask it another question. Which parts of the translation do you feel most certain about? And which parts do you feel least certain about? So I'm not, I, I don't want to see it for reference. I want to see the specific things it says. Gener the oral structure and flow of the translation are faithful to the original text, capturing the sequence of events and emotional response of the author. Here it continues with Iceman. Actually, I like the, the other version first. So I can specify that for the future. So anyway, it's going to write it again. But in the meantime, let's look through this again. The ones you feel least certain about are the translation Woman Vinuto al Ghiaccio as Man from the Ice or Iceman, while Iceman is well known for Utsi, Man from the Ice is more literal translation. Well, I guess here it has the whole sentence, to be fair, and here it's the specific term itself within that sentence. Anyway, um, the phrase traveling exhibition of South Tyrol Archaeological Museum captures a meaning, but there might be more pre precise or commonly used terminology for such, such exhibitions in English speaking contests. I think it's in um, Esibizione Itinerante, Mostra Itinerante. So, yeah, traveling show. Tra I'm fine with traveling exhibition. So, you know, which is something I should probably specify. The translation of Avrei Potuto Vedere Online Gratis is what I could have seen online for free. It's straightforward, but the nuance of frustration might be conveyed differently depending on the target audience. That's, that's interesting as well. And we'll get to that a bit later when I try to different tones. For now, there's one thing I want to try again. Please redo the translation, keeping in mind this is an op-ed for a local newspaper. Actually, I guess it's more precise to say with a letter to the editor, but anyway. Uh, so you see what you can do. You can give it some context, which as translators, we always need. So why not give it some context as well? And so here you have careful to be 100% informed. And here it says carefully to be fully informed. It has terms that are more congruent, let's say, with an op-ed on a newspaper rather than just randomly translating something. So hopefully that gives an idea. And here's one other thing I would do. And in fact, I usually do this from the beginning, but I wanted to show you the process. Usually I give it a persona. So I say, you are a professional Italian to English translator. You are translating an op-ed piece that was in a local newspaper in Ticino, Switzerland. 
please redo the translation, keeping this in mind. There we go. One thing that's missing here is I want a better title. So we can probably ask it something like, give it a snazzier title, please. I wonder if we can use snazzier with ChatGPT. We'll see, I guess. Let's see, exhibition falls flat, a disappointing encounter at Castel Grande. That's not bad. How about here? Give 10 different options for a snazzy title. Or I can say a captivating title, maybe. And there you go. And then you can pick which one you want, and that way you get the tone for the title. This is it for the general translation. We're gonna get a bit more into uh, some of the cool things you can do in a second. Last thing I would say is something like, please rate your translation of the article. And it gives the translation an eight out of 10 and it talks about the strengths and the areas for improvement. This sort of overlaps with what I asked for before about the strong points and the weak points. But again, this gives you something to look for. Now let's have a little bit of fun with it. And by fun, I mean, there are certain things you can do. You can develop your niche. If it is your niche or if it's not your niche yet, you can develop something like your niche. So what do I mean by this? The, the lowest hanging fruit I would say in terms of the example I wanna give would be localization, right? Because if you're writing something for a different audience, let's say it's a marketing text, then you can say you want it to sound different. For example, if you have a text in Italian and you want to translate into English for an American audience, well, Americans, in terms of ads and stuff like that, they use a lot more um, action verbs, a lot more excitement, if you will, a lot more exclamation points, stuff like that. And you can, you can sort of specify that. You can say something like you're working localization and you need to translate this marketing or advertising text for an American audience. Keep in mind that American advertising text tends to be a lot more exciting and tends to have a lot more action verbs, et cetera, et cetera, compared to Italian text. So keep this in mind for the translation. ChatGPT can be very good for that, but you can, you can play around with this in other ways as well. For example, let's do this. Please redo the translation, emphasizing how mad I am about this exhibit. I wonder if that'll be enough. Let's try it. From now on, I'll be sure to thoroughly research exhibitions before setting foot in Castel Grande. So as you can see, the tone here is uh, it, it's emphasizing how I was disappointed about it, which I was. It turned out to be a bitter disappointment. The only way to see Otzi was through a grainy black and white webcam feed. It was pointed at Otzi, who remained in Bolzano, offering feeb a feeble glimpse on the screen at Castel Grande. So it does emphasize that, which I like. And you can do other things. For example, let's do this. Redo the translation, but rather than making it about my personal visit, make it about someone else's visit in the past. I don't know, for an example. Visitors flocked to Bedingsona with high hopes of seeing her. After completing the tour, displaying us has turned out to disappointment for many. The only way to say Utsi was through a grainy black and white webcam feed, blah, blah, blah. So see, it gives a different point of view if you want to do something like that. And you can have some fun with it as well. You could do something here. Redo the translation as a poem. <laughs> Let's see what happens here. And there you go. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but that gives you an idea. The reason I say this can be useful to you is because a lot of times now for your niche, you want to combine other things along with the translation. And I've already mentioned this before, how if you're translating, say, something into French, maybe it's financial statements, you want to make sure that they conform to accounting standards in France. So that, that means you need to change certain things. You need to use different terminology. Also, obviously, if you're translating something something legal, it's different whether you're translating for the UK or for Australia or for Canada or for the US because they have different legal systems. And you need to keep things like that into account. Obviously, this is very big for marketing, but uh, for pretty much any type of specialization, this can be the case. And so playing around with ChatGPT can definitely help for ideas for this and uh, for doing things along those lines. So that's why I wanted to show you um, how you can play around with it in this sense. So many times, even after having conducted a translation yourself you're very happy with, you can still use ChatGPT to try to play around with it and see what else you can do rather than making a very direct translation. So that's enough for now. There are other little things you can do, but I kind of think this gives an idea as to what you can do with ChatGPT when you're conducting translations and the different ways to treat it and how you can play around with it. And that's 
precisely what I recommend. Just play around with it. If you have dialogue, if you need to use slang, whatever it might be, you can check with ChatGPT and see if it can help you out in that sense. I like to regard it as an assistant who you can give a lot of instructions to. And they're not very reliable for a lot of things, but you never know what they're gonna come up with so they can surprise you as well. If you have other ideas or you came across other ways to use ChatGPT, feel free to let me know. I'm interested in seeing them. I just thought this was a good way to show how you can use ChatGPT, not as a substitute for translation, but how you can use it for your own benefit uh, you know, rather than having it benefit the end clients or the agencies or stuff like that. And actually, Gemini is very different. They're also obviously paid versions of AI. In fact, they're ones that concentrate more on translation. Adrian on Freelance Verse, he recently did a video using the pros.com built-in AI, which I forgot the name right now. That's quite interesting. So definitely check that video out. And that's specifically made for translators. There are also some add-ons you can... Um, add to chat GPT and so I could get into those. I won't right now though. I just wanted to give a general idea, broad overview and let you play around with it and see what's possible. So hopefully you found this useful and otherwise I'll talk to you next time. Okay, thanks, bye. Savedum.